Hi, this is Jeff Hicks. This is a clip about working with objects in Windows PowerShell for my train signal course, Windows PowerShell Fundamentals. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. So let's try something like this. This trips up a lot of people. I'm going to create a variable $z which will hold the result of the read host commandlet and it's going to prompt me to enter a value for z. So I'm going to put in 5. Let's look at z. It looks like it says 5. So let's multiply $z times 4. Not what I expected. Probably not what you expected either. Instead I got 4 fives instead of the 20. So what type of object is $z? Oh, it's a string object. So to figure this out, if we look at help for read host and go down to the end, you can see that the output is either a system.string or a system.security.secure string. So basically it puts strings to the pipeline. It does not write pretty much any other type of object. However, we can force PowerShell to take the output from read host. So when it creates $z, create it as an integer. The int in square brackets indicates I want you to treat it as an integer. I could also have used int 32. So now if I enter a value, I'll use the same value of 5. $z again looks like 5. Now if I multiply it, now I get the result that I am expecting because $z is an integer. Let's look at the name of the type and there you can see it is an int 32. I can modify the value of z. Let's change it to 13. I'm going to add 4 to it. So $z is now 17. I can divide it by 3. Oh, now it's 6. That's because $z is an integer, which means everything gets rounded. If I want more granularity, I need to create $z as another type called a double. So I'm going to create $z as a double, give it a value of 17, and I'm going to take $z divided by 3 and save the result to the variable y. So now $y, there's a result that might be more of, a, of what you were looking for. And if I look at the type of that, I can see that it is in fact a double because taking the double dividing by three created the double. Now let's go back to $z. Remember last time we used it, it was set. We used it to read the integer value. If I try to set it now to say a string, I get an error because PowerShell can't convert, as you can see in the error message there, cannot convert the system.double to a string. If for some reason you want to reuse the variable name as a different type, then I just need to tell PowerShell, hey, treat this as a string object. And now I can see that it is in fact a string. We can also use the these type accelerators such as date time, which will take what normally would be a string, and this is assuming you're using kind of a North American uh, date time culture of October 31st, 2011. And now $dt is an actual date time object. If I pipe that to get member, let me scroll up here and we can see there it says system.dateTime. Again, look at all those cool methods and a number of properties that we can work with the date time object. If I pipe $dt, for example, to select all, there were all the properties of so I could do date time, I could do date, I can get day of the week, some very useful properties that you might find helpful. All right, let's move on and let's talk about creating new objects completely out of, out of thin air. For that, we're going to use the new object commandlet. This allows me to create an instance of a .NET class or a COM object. So I'm going to create a or a generic object, in this case PS object. This is what I tend to do a lot of in my scripting. Let me finish this here and I'll explain what I've typed. All right, so I've got dollar $demo, which would be the result of new object. And I'm going to create the PS object is a special .NET object for a generic PowerShell object. And I'm going to define a hash table for a 
set of properties, such as name, which would be Jeff. The title property will be trainer, and the course property will be called PowerShell Fundamentals. So if I look at dollar demo and do the get type, I can see that's a custom object, which doesn't worry me too much. I pipe that to get member though. There are, now in this case, this is no properties, but there are the properties that I created in my object. And if I type dollar demo, there is an object just like you would expect to see with get process or get service or get child item. It's an object with a number of properties. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.